Good evening. And welcome to tonight's Grub with VW. Um, so tonight I'm making a spinach and chickpea curry. Um, I have made it a couple of times before, but I've um, the recipe wasn't very good, so I've made my own modifications to it, and I now think I've got a pretty good result from it. Um, it is a, uh, the way I make it, it's a vegetarian, but not a vegan dish, because I put a bit of butter in it. But you could, um, if you're a vegan, you could leave out the butter and just use rapeseed oil instead. So it is capable of being a vegan dish. Um, and you know, we're all trying to eat a little bit less meat, aren't we? Um, so we'll see how, how this goes. Um, so I'm just chopping up pepper at the moment and doing a bit of other prep. Uh, and I'll be back with you in a little while. Right. And that's the prep done. So um, I will make a start over at the stove. So I will turn on the heat let the pan start to warm up. Now the recipe calls for... Um, use of a curry paste and you could do that if you like you can just buy a curry paste and use it but I tend to make my own so a bit of a scoop of butter to start off with I'll put the heat down low just while I'm putting the curry paste into the pan so a chunk of butter and I've earlier I chopped up there's a bit of ginger there's a couple of cloves of garlic and there's a stick of sort of um the middle sort of smaller um uh, lighter sort of stick of celery at the middle as well and a bit of coriander there so I'm just going to put all of that in so this sort of is the basis of a approximation of a curry paste so I'm going to put a bit of chilli puree you can use fresh chilies instead but I'm using a tube today that tube is just about empty and also a little bit of tomato paste Again, from a tube that is just about empty. Uh, a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And I'm going to put in some coriander, ground coriander, as well as this bit of coriander leaf that was already in that um, little ramekin. So a bit of coriander. A bit of cumin. bit of turmeric. I've got turmeric here. Oh, yes. I've also got some in the cupboard. Turmeric doesn't have a really strong flavour. I think it's mainly an ingredient of curries because of its yellow colour. And I'm just going to put some curry powder as well. And this, this is quite a largish batch. Um, we asked for a medium curry powder, that's what I usually use, but um, on various occasions the supermarket hasn't had the medium, so they've sent the mild or the hot. So how do you make a medium? You just mix a bit of mild with a bit of hot. So about um, two thirds of a teaspoon of the hot. And again, about, about the same amount of the mild. It needn't be an exact science. Here at the Bakeridge, as it started to be called, we've discovered, well I've discovered, who already knew, that uh, baking does need a fair bit of precision uh, in terms of the, oh, I almost forgot, a little bit of cayenne pepper and a bit of paprika as well. Um, baking, you sort of do need to get the right amount of the ingredients, but it's more of an art than science when you're cooking. Um, paprika, I'd better close the cupboard door then. There we go. And we may need a little bit more, um, a bit more butter as well, because that's going to be a bit dry. I'll probably put a bit of rapeseed oil in as well, rather than relying solely on butter. So that is sort of the base of the curry paste. I'll turn the heat up a little bit, just to melt the butter and let that start to cook a bit. Like I say, if you're a vegan or if you prefer, you, if you'd rather have, have unsaturated fat, you can leave the butter out and just use a bit of oil instead. So it is capable of being a vegan dish. So, next, I have two medium onions that were chopped up a little while ago. I'm going to add those in a moment once the pan warms up a bit. I'm actually going to add a little bit of oil as well, just to help cook the onions. Just 
some rapeseed oil. See how it looks as they start to cook down. If, it, um, if the colour isn't really there, then I can add a little bit more uh, curry powder. <coughs> and while I'm cooking today, I am drinking a little bit of leftover cider from yesterday. It's a hex cider. Um, I put about half of it into the pork with cider sauce dish that I made yesterday. Um, so today I'm drinking the rest of it while I'm making the curry. That is looking both a little bit dry, and I think it could also do with a little bit more of the seasoning. So I might add that later, but I'm going to put more oil in now. The onion should just separate out into its little bits because of the way an onion is structured, but you might give it a bit of help as you go. So the first time I made this I stuck to the original recipe and it was okay, um, but just okay. It was, a, um, it was more like a side dish than a proper curry. Second time I added a few more ingredients and just um, jazzed it up a little bit and I also cheated by putting a jar of patax in, don't judge me, um, and it was really nice. Um, so this time I'm doing somewhere in between, so we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so next uh, I've got a green pepper and there's also one fresh tomato there, so I'm going to add those. Now, as well as the tomato, you have actually now got the um, what's called the holy trinity of Cajun um, cooking. So this is this is meant to be an Indian dish, so it's curry, but um, I've borrowed a bit from, from the Cajun style. So green pepper, onion, and celery is the special trinity that's the base of just about every Cajun dish the jambalayas and the gumbos and that sort of thing. I'm going to turn the heat down and just let that cook for a little while. While that's cooking, I'm going to drain and rinse the chickpeas. So I'll just need to get into the cupboard here to get a, a strainer out. So I've already taken the lid off one of them, being careful not to cut myself on the lid. I'll take them off the other one, which is a ring pull, so much easier. And over to the sink. Oh, like I was saying, before I was interrupted by the camera dropping out, um, I was just rinsing and draining some chickpeas, which will be going in in a moment. Those there. Just give this another stir. Now, the thing with a fresh tomato is it doesn't sort of have the, the juice that gives a sort of a sauce to all of this. So there are sort of two options of that. You can either put in a bit of vegetable stock, or you can just put in a can of tomatoes. Um, so that, that, that sort of gives it the, the liquid. So I'm going to go for the latter option. I'll just tip in a can of tomatoes. Just rinse that out with a bit of water. taste of that in a moment but um, I think I may need to put a little bit more curry powder in. Just heat back up a little bit. Let's put the cold tomatoes in. So 
So, um, today is uh, 16th of December, I think. Um, Wednesday, we're a week from the solstice here, so sunset is at about 10 to 4, and you get a little bit of twilight through at about half past 4. Um, been wet today, chucking it down, and windy as well, so I didn't really get in a proper walk. But we went and did a click and collect from Tesco's because we couldn't get a delivery slot. Um, so London's just gone into tier 3 because we're in the grip of the December surge or the second wave, whatever you want to call it. Second national lockdown did not work, mainly, I think, because they didn't close the schools, um, which meant there was a sort of a COVID reservoir in the school age population that exploded out into the mainstream population once some of the lockdown was released. But also there are COVID hits everywhere and the government blew its credibility back in April and May, so a lot of people aren't taking any notice of the COVID regs anyway. Right, so that is sort of the base for my curry. Um, I'm just going to have a little taste of that. That does just need a little bit more spice. Um, just going to put a little bit more of the, look at the hot one. Not that much. You can always add, you can't subtract once it's in. There we go. Oh, there's my spoon in there. So mix that in. Oops, put that other side. So at this point I will add the chickpeas, so that's the two cans of chickpeas that I rinsed earlier. Then I'm going to rinse the spinach and get that ready. So I'll for the bag of spinach. That's a 200 gram bag, but exactly how much of it you use is kind of flexible. I'm using the whole bag because it is a little bit long in the tooth. It won't be any good tomorrow. I'll give that a rinse because you do get a bit of grit and stuff in spinach. I'm going to put some vegetable stock in that just to give it a bit more um, more of a base which I haven't tried yet so that's a I'm going a little bit off piste here the other option would be to cheat and just put a jar of patax in but, um, which I might do if I was cooking it off camera but since I'm cooking it on camera I'm not going to do that today So there are various ways to make vegetable stock, but I just use bouillon. And it's a spoonful of that with about 250 mils of water. So it's about four spoonfuls per litre. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of curry powder in as well into that um, stock. So the mild one this time. later. So once the kettle boils, I'll put that in. <sighs> so that's 
sort of a curried vegetable stock. pasting as well. Bubbling for, I don't know, um, five, ten minutes, something like that, so it's cooked down a little bit. Needs to reduce down a little bit more, but that'll happen as time goes on. I'll just put a stir. next thing to add is the spinach. So it's a bag of spinach which I washed earlier. I'm just going to tip that in. That looks like a lot of spinach. Uh, once it wilts down it is not. So the spinach sort of, as many of you all know, it really does wilt down to almost nothing. So that um, isn't as much as it looks like. So I'll put the lid back on and allow that to wilt down. Ah, before I do that I just need to add a squeeze of lemon juice as well. That's a slice that's probably about a sixth of a lemon. I'll just fish those pips out. Not that it's the end of the world if they end up staying in. Get a grip on it, there's one. And another one went down there. There we go. Alright, so that'll just take a couple of minutes to wilt. Meanwhile, I was just sampling the wine pairing for tonight, uh, which is a Bacchus uh, from the Poulton Hill uh, estate in the Cotswolds. So um, total food miles or rather drink miles for tonight. Um, about, about 12, 15, something like that. It's within, yeah, it's within about 12 miles of here. Uh, and it's a very drinkable um, white. It says it has an elegant light gold appearance with notes of elderflower and ripe peach on the nose. Don't know about that, but I know it's very drinkable. And it does go with spicy food like this. So um, I'll just give that another minute for the spinach to wilt and then I'll show you what that looks like. Um, in terms of serving, um, you can just have it with ordinary basmati rice, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm having it with a um, coconut, lime and coriander rice uh, from Waitrose Dali. Uh, so I will actually put that in the microwave to start heating up in a moment. Um, you see what I mean when they, they suggest that you can just cook the spinach with the residual heat from the pan? Um, my experience is you can't. To cook the spinach properly you need to have the pan on the heat for a couple of minutes. So I'll put this in the microwave to cook while that's just finishing off. So I don't think this is the first, is this the first vegetarian dish I've made. I think I might be. I've made the banana cake, which is vegetarian but not vegan. Um, this, this particular um, way I've made it today isn't vegan either because it's got a bit of butter in it, but you could leave the butter out. This is quite capable of being a, a vegan dish. So I might even make it for the, um, the housemate at Gumnut at some point because he's a, he's a bit of a vegan. Uh, he's Giacomo. Um, you can see that spinach is starting to wilt now. So um, did I tear the bag? I did tear the bag. So I'll put that on to start. That takes two minutes. And then I'll lift the lid and give that a stir in a moment. And sort of see that that's starting to happen there. I wish you leave the lid on to let the steam do its, do its work. Rice will be ready in a minute. Um, that might be it for tonight. We'll show you what the curry looks like once the spinach is wilted. But um, yeah, thanks for watching everyone.